I just want to say, yes, you will improve on what you're doing. But it wouldn't hurt to relax. Just go at your own pace and enjoy yourself. Enjoy your art. Hey, what's up you guys? Me Comics here. And if you don't know me, I am a comic artist, illustrator, a multimedia artist here in Batangas. So what is happening? I'm right here in my, at my desk, in my room. And we're gonna draw um, Sleek. Sleek is a chicken who has an afro and he's a samurai. <laughs> Alright, I don't know much about this character, but I did saw, uh, saw him in my feed. It's made by uh, Crayon Chicken, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, at first glance, uh, I, I really want to draw this character. And then apparently, there is a contest for drawing this chicken. So, hell yeah, I mean, because you know, this chicken is so cool. And yeah, um, despite my busy schedule, I think I can fit in one hour or two hours worth of work and shoot it while I'm doing it. So I'll show you a bit of, a little bit of my process, um, just raw stuff, just uh, taken up from here. And yeah, let's uh, see where it goes. Okay, so before we start, just to clear things up, a little disclaimer if you will this is a video that is targeted towards uh, beginners or people who are just starting out with drawing this is a tutorial for them so the tutorial may be slow or it may be like maybe obvious to you advanced people out there but if you're not a beginner or if you're not an artist and you're still curious of what's gonna happen in this video or if you're curious about the process then please feel free to watch till the end Okay guys, so welcome to my screen. Apologies if my voice seems to be distorted or if it's not pleasant to hear. It's because my mic is not working at the moment. So yeah, uh, but let's just you know carry on with it. Alright, so the first step that I usually do when drawing unfamiliar characters is that I get to know them first. So research up a bit, so sleek. Korean chicken head. Alright, so I usually do this uh, with fine arts or uh, if the character is and I don't know the character or if I really want to get a sense of the character's detail. So I get to know them first, uh, usually in Facebook or in, in uh, Instagram, wherever I found the character first. But you know. Uh, for simplicity, let's just go to Google Images. If you're into like aesthetic stuff, like design-wise, uh, you know, go to uh, other websites that cater to that, like um, designinspiration.com, if I'm not mistaken, maybe Pinterest. But you know, for clarity's sake, just let's just go to Google Images. So here are the pictures of our character. It's kind of um, minimal actually, but. You know, whatever works. Um, Alright, so get a feel for your character. Um, what vibe are you getting? Um, this is important so that we know how uh, the mood of your drawing is gonna be later. I get a feeling of badassery in this image, and um, at the same time, maybe peaceful, peacefulness. Uh, maybe this character is really calm. Anyway, I guess there's no pictures uh, left. Oh, this one's got out. But all right. After you've done your um, uh, research, um, after you've done your um, vibe check of the character, um, search for the pose that you want. So for me, I don't want any more standing characters, just uh, idle. So uh, let's search for a different pose. Since this chicken is a samurai, let's just go for the obvious samurai pose. Hi. So here are the poses that I'm gonna be working with. I'm just gonna search for the right feel or the right um, right pose. This one looks interesting. I kind of want to pose that is um, getting ready getting ready pose you know like maybe unsheathing his sword or maybe doing a battle stance like this, this guy after you've done your after you search for the reference that is suited for you 
um, yeah, let's get on with penciling. So here we are at my desk. Um, so after you've done your research, after you've done your um, reference hunt, it's time to actually draw the thing. So um, welcome to my desk, I guess um, a little bit of um, tour. These are all just uh, work in progresses or whips. So now that the tour is done, let's get on to it. <laughs> Actually the key here, the key about drawing um, from reference is that you don't actually copy the reference um, per line. You um, you take this as an inspiration or you take this as a basis for your drawing. So let's say I want this um, um, character that uh, unsheathing his sword, but yeah, actually, let's just get on with it, you know? So here, I'm actually adjusting the pose to um, suit our character because our character is a chicken and no way there's a chicken like this. So you got to actually um, compare the, um, their bodies. So, so Sleek's body is actually shaped like a cylinder or more like a capsule from its torso to its head. Sleek's arms are human-like, so it's I guess it's okay to copy uh, this type of arm or hand. It's also important to keep in mind uh, your reference's joint. So, for example, this reference has a joint here, like uh, in the shoulder, so that's supposed to be here. And then here, so from joint first, like Figure out where the joints are first, and then make a line like that, and then flush it out. So, yeah. So the important step actually in sketching is figuring out also the shape, the basic shapes of the character. So you ha you have to break it down. As I said, the head to the torso is a cylindrical shape. Let's say the hands is just a square like that. It's just it's important to build the basic shape first and then add the details later. Another example is, let's say, the goggles of Sleek. It's circular, so, but Sleek is facing that way, so the circle gets kind of uh, distorted, so that's the shape it's gonna be. And then the beak, it's this um, triang triangular shape. And then the afro, so the afro is kind of circular, but I kind of wanna play around with it, so unleash your creativity, I guess. So it's kind of rough at first in this penciling stage, but you know, it's going to get uh, more tighter and tighter. I think this one's finished. Uh, this is kind of loose, but I guess this is okay. So alright, once you're done with your pencils, it's time to move on to the inking stage. The inking stage is actually my favorite part of the drawing, uh, of the drawing process. It solidifies your work and it makes them pop, you know. So grab your tools, grab your pens, inks, and whatnot to start the game. So for inking, I'm using the Speedball Super Black. So I take my brush, I use any type of brush. I use uh, Soy Bou Blanc Extra. This is in French, so I don't know. So um, doesn't matter, just dip your brush into the bottle of ink. Um, yeah, and let's get loose. When inking, it's important to have a scratch paper around your drawing. This piece of paper will shield your ink uh, from creating a mess, but I'm still creating a mess, so I don't know. My inking evolved back then, like last year or last two years. I am super meticulous with inks. I'm super like uh, uh, accurate. I want to be accurate. I want to be like uh, super smooth, but I realized that um, Making a mess or like um, being loose with it actually gives it more authenticity or more more like a it gives a raw energy to it, you know. At first, I start with creating super black splatters um, in the shadows for the shadows. I mean, sorry. So this like that. Super loose. For the inking stage, I just have fun and, you know, let it out. I visualize where you're gonna put the shadows. So that's where I hit. For example, let's say the lighting is over here, like facing his direction. 
So the shadow is going to be like the opposite. So it should be like that. It should be contrasting. In this stage, like I don't care if I make a mistake because it's going to be fixed anyway. Sometimes I like to uh, do some spider effects like um, for example like that. Can you see it? Sorry. I guess it gives it a, a little, I don't know, character or it creates this interesting effect that um, it's almost like it's moving. Yeah, the downside is just your hand's gonna get all um, inky, <laughs> but you know, whatever works. Uh, this one's looking sweet. So the next step that I do after the heavy blacks is uh, grab my um, what's this? pilot pen, pilot uh, parallel pen. Yeah, um, another tip, if, since this is paper, it's not like, a, it's not a mural, it's not fixated to, I can't, it's not fixated to a wood or cement or anything, it's just paper, so do the angle that uh, you like the most. Change to the angle that is most comfortable. People often ask me like, how do you do your art? How do you do your inking? Well, I tell them, um, you do it however you want, like, there's no rules. And I quote Jim Mahfoud on this. Oh no, I run out of things. Actually, you can use any tool that you want, uh, depending on your supply. <laughs> um, for example, I just use this Panda Ballpoint Pen Stick. Just a regular old Panda Ball Pen would be sufficient, but you can use anything actually. Pick a ball pen and roll with it. I think we're done with the with the inks. Um, you know, uh, this is just uh, playful inking, so you know it's whatever. So after that, just erase your pencils, and we're done. A little bit of Mikamix touch. Let's just you know draw whatever in the background. Like, uh, you know, let's put some stars here. Play around with it. It's important to have fun with your craft. Some artists are too uptight to the point that they don't enjoy what they're doing anymore. If you're an artist like that, I just want to say, yes, you will improve on what you're doing. But it wouldn't hurt to relax. Just go at your own pace and enjoy yourself enjoy your art all right now that we're done with our ink finished ink piece it's time to scan it but for those who don't have any scanner at home you can just take a picture of it just make sure that it's a uh, high quality ish and you know find some uh, kind of bright light and see what works okay so welcome back to my screen guys so we'll be using photoshop for coloring after you're done taking a good enough quality image of your artwork, just open up your Photoshop and we'll drop it from there. Depending on the artwork, we may have to adjust the size or dimension, but since this is a quick fan art, I'll just um, crop it down. This is an approximate ratio of your artwork. You could always resize your pixel dimensions later on. Sometimes you get to encounter problems like these when you're trying to take a picture. So what I do is I control plus T or transform the image and then I warp it so that I could replicate the uh, original image as much as possible. There. Alright, so the next step is cleaning your line work. 
So here, the old me would have said you could adjust it by using levels or control L. But the new me has found a shortcut. If ever you want it super black and white, you should click on threshold and you should adjust the blacks from there. This is a much quicker version of cleaning the line work. But if you really want to adjust the grayscale, if you want, you could always go back to Control L or Control M. But I don't have time for that. <laughs> Alright, so it looks super clean now. The next step that I do is find some color palette that would fit the mood that I'm going for. You don't necessarily need to create your own color palette. Finding sets on the internet is fine. But if you really want to adjust it or customize your art from scratch, then go ahead, man. The next step would be that I choose a base color from these color palettes. So, here's good. Okay, so this tutorial is for beginners and people who are just starting out. So maybe you don't have a Wacom tablet or tablet in general. So, I'm gonna use my mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Prove that you don't really need a tablet to color digitally. So what I do is instead of the pen tool, I use the lasso tool because I found the pen tool hard to use when I was a beginner. So, well, you can use the pen tool if you want, but for me, I'm going to use the lasso tool. So use the lasso tool to select your character. Hold down shift and then select to add more selection and then Hold Alt if you need to subtract a selection, then keep repeating the process until you select the whole body of the character. So this process is called flatting if you don't already know. So flatting, you select a whole character and then change the color bit by bit. So, so for example, when you're done selecting the whole body, fill it with a base color and then select one part of the body that has a different color for example its head let's start with the goggles and beak first so when i select this part and then i change its color it's gonna be easier for me to do so because i already have one base color so repeat this process until all the body parts are accurate with their color Flatting is actually the first basic step for colorists in the comic book industry or making comic books in general so that comic artists would change the colors easily. And if ever the artist needs to add blending or texture to a specific color, then they would easily do so because they can easily select that color. So keep repeating this until all the colors are filled in. And that's a wrap. So thank you for watching this long ass video. Uh, super sorry because it got this long because I didn't saw the time. And yeah, hopefully you learned something out of this um, what 18 to 20 minute video. Comment below if you have any further questions or if there is a part of the video that's unclear to you. So comment if you have any suggestions or if there is a topic that you want me to discuss. If there is a topic that you want me to teach you guys, uh, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, um, inform me by commenting down below. If you dig my stuff, if you like what I do, um, follow me at social media, at HeyMeComics, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. Also, I like to take this time to announce that I have a website, guys. What? It's super exciting for me because, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like my digital house or something. I have a personal space in the internet, so that's really cool. If ever you're curious or if you're interested to see it, uh, visit nicofernando.com. So, 
Yes, I also like to announce that our thesis, Understanding the Rise of the Batangas Hip Hop Scene, is now in motion. So me and my boy Herbs are now planning for it as early as now even though school haven't started yet. And together with RAP or Revolutionary Art for Peace and 413, we're gonna host a little something for you Batangas enthusiasts and artists out there. For now, it's a secret but do stick around and we'll update you. Again, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and see you next time. Inaluna ang sarili, bumangon na sa kama Inunat ang buto, sabay harap na sa lamesa Nagain ang pagkain ang nakakagana Nabusog na sa ating din kasi wala nang gana Tanghali na bumangon, hindi makaramdam ng buto Mang gusto mong mangyari ay matulog lang maghapon Tamad na araw, sarap ang...